Hmm, what a lot of fun. Puppet on a string. Well, it really is a puppet on a string, but it's under strings, not over strings. It's a funny one, this. You can get a bit of movement. It's all done with pushing this little base at the, at the, at the bottom of the thing, which has got a string just above it, and that relaxes the, spr the strings and allows them to operate. So it's like a sort of understrung puppet on the string. You get a bit of movement, but it's nothing like a real marionette where you get very subtle movement indeed. But this is really made for small children, and I had one of these as a child myself. This is uh, part of my collection from 1981. There's only a few, few variations on this, you know. So as, as much as, as there are, I've managed to find about six or seven of them. That's the first one, the most basic model. Here was a big step forward. Some ten years later, I came across this one here, which caught my eye because it was very obviously one of these string, understring puppet things, and yet there was no place for your thumb to push. Well, the answer was you press these little yellow flanges. They had strings inside and attached the strings. Look at this action here with the back legs. Doing a lovely action. <laughs> the tail going down. And you can make it flop over, which is what small children would love to be able to do different ways, depending on how you're tilting it as well. So a bit of action, nothing like the finesse you get of a real puppet with overstrings, but a nice concept, that, and it's a nice new way of making it perform. Then I came across these ballpoint pens, which intrigued me, because they were obviously the same sort of thing, these little fingers moving around, but there's no button for them to push. So only when I took the lid off and started writing with it, I realised what went on. Of course... There's a spring inside and a long string going up, and when the string's relaxed by being pushed against the spring, the child could be writing and scribbling away, and this wonderful mouse was doing antics on top of the pen. Very, very exciting for small children. Let's see what his girlfriend does. I think probably the same thing. Oh, yes, good, good, good. Flop, 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 flop. Very nice idea. I don't think I've seen them since then, because um, I've had a good look. I thought it was a clever version of it. That little hula girl doing the same thing. Now, a German company came up with a very nice little variation which we, we liked so much we put them in our, in our shop at one time. They're, they're still made, I see them in Nuremberg every year. It looks like an ordinary sum toy and you push the base and see what happens. Oh, look at that, isn't that clever? There's a magnet on the top of his head, and there's a magnet on the top hat here. When you put it on the little plinth there, you get him exactly lined up and bend him gently forward, he'll pick it up in his head. If you, could work too fast, it'll flip it over and that's it. <laughs> but the idea is to do it gently. And here's another variation of the same thing. It's a clown and there's a ball at the bottom and he's going to get it on his head. Look at that. And he's got another one in his hand too. Beautifully done. Rather than that sensibly, I think they put a little string on that because a child would lose that, that very easily. If they flipped it and it fell off, it would it'd run away and, and disappear. So that's a nice little variation to it. And both those, I say, are still made in Germany. Here's a very interesting one which I came across about 1991. It's some, um, it looks like something from the South Pacific, isn't it? It's got a palm tree and that waggles about. It's got the usual thumb place underneath where I'm pushing with my, with my thing, with my thumb. And then the hula girl who's dancing like anything, she'll make her work as well, yes. But of course, this is actually showing something that really has happened there in the Pacific Ocean. You get these very strong winds, they call typhoons. And when they're blowing, well, we can make it to work, can't we? And a bit harder. And finally, a real typhoon. <gasps> That's what happens. Nice way of depicting it, isn't it? So the mechanism has got this simple but curious construction of a hollow, a series of little hollow rods with a string going through it. And I did notice a few years ago that magicians use something similar with a magic wand, where they have, in this case, I made my own version, little pieces of ceramic here, which they use in fires, I think. There's a string going through the middle of it, and when the string is tightened, those can't move, they stick together. So at many a children's party when I was doing simple magic, I told the children, asked the children to tell us to stand up straight, and it would, stand up straight, and then blow hard and <sighs> down it would go. All I did was to relax it, of course. So a nice little variation on these, on these thumb toys. It also occurs to me, if you're looking for something to, to invent yourselves, all the ones I've got of these have got either one, two, or four strings. You could have something with as many as mm, ten strings, for instance, all the way around. And as you put your thumb on it and roll like that, you get a movement of perhaps uh, ten, ten, ten little children all doing ring a ring of roses, all falling down, or, or perhaps the uh, Stonehenge all collapsing, I don't know. But it'd be a nice idea if you had about ten little strings, ten figures, a bit of rolling action, and you might get some very interesting toy effects from those. So something to think about. The last one is probably the most extravagant I've come across. It's a German 
design, I think it is, but made in Hungary. And I found this at Nuremberg in the mid-1990s. And it, um, it, it's really a depiction of a famous story from the Brothers Grimm of a German fairy tale. So uh, I can tell you perhaps um, the story. So are you, are you sitting comfortably? Hmm. Then I'll begin. <laughs> there were once four animals on a farm who were getting a bit old and a bit useless, they felt. So they were in danger of being thrown out by the farmer or mistreated. So they decided to um, take to the road. There was a donkey and a dog and a cat and a rooster. And on the way to Bremen, which is where they were aiming to go, a little port town in the north of Germany, where they aimed to become musicians, I think the story went, they came across a little cottage. When they looked in the window, there were four robbers inside, all gloating over their ceilings. So they devised a plan, and they waited until the night fell. Then in the dark, they crept up towards the house, and they stood up rather like acrobats, with the dog standing on the donkey's back, and the cat standing on the dog's back, and the rooster at the top flew, and there they stood. And then, as a signal, they all made as loud a noise as they could. The donkey brayed, and the dog barked, and the cat screeched, and the rooster shrieked, or oh, cock-a-doodle-dood. And the noise was so intense and so terrible that the robbers inside rushed out of the house and fled into the night. So the animals were able to move in and take the place over and live there. Hmm, happily ever after until the end of their lives. What a tale. <laughs>